Hello, Troop 50363. Today we're going to do a walkthrough of Cybersecurity Badge Number 3, Cyber Investigator. And in this one, there's going to be a lot of me saying pause the video and figure this out on your own. And also a lot of me saying if you have the digital form that I sent in the email, you can open up the workbook and do this project in the workbook. So there's a lot of do-it-yourself moments, but I'm going to help you walk through it anyway and, uh, and do like little answer keys to a lot of this section. So badge, one, uh, badge 3, Cybersecurity Investigator. Do you love solving puzzles or searching for clues? In this badge, you'll get to do just that. Cybersecurity is a big word that means computer safety. Investigator is a big word that means someone who solves mysteries. You can use computers to search for clues and solve puzzles too. Let's find out how. So this badge is going to talk about how to safely investigate or search things. Computers are amazing tools and search engines allow us to pretty much have the world's information and technology at our fingertips. So we can ask a question and find an answer. But while searching for that answer, we want to be cyber safe and we don't want to stumble into places or websites or digital, um, or digital applications that might be unsafe for us. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and being good smart decoders. So the first steps in doing this is finding out how to search for an answer. The next one is to use your clues to figure out who someone is if you need to. So making sure you know how to do, figure out who's who in different information. And then test your powers of observation. The purpose is when you've earned this badge you will know how to use your powers of observation to investigate. And step one is to find out how to search for an answer. When you want to learn something new, you have to ask the right questions. You also have to look in the right places. If you want to find out what bird eats, you might read a book about birds. You might look at birds in your backyard, or you might watch a video about a bird. You won't read a book about stars or look at pictures of turtles or watch videos about dancing. You wouldn't do that if you're trying to find out about birds. To become a cybersecurity investigator, you need to learn how to find answers. And the first step is to find answers is uh, learning to ask the right questions. The second step is to use clues to figure out who someone is. What is a clue? It's a piece of information that helps solve a mystery. What is an identity? It is who a person is. Your name, your date of birth, are parts of your identity. Your identity is made up of information that makes you different from other people. Cybersecurity investigators use clues to figure out who people are. Test your investigation skills. So here we go. On this page, Someone gave you a picture of an animal and you want to learn about it. Which website would you use to match each animal with the website that will help you learn about it? So the first one is this little dush hound doggy. And our website choices are A, how to hiss, B, I bark a lot, C, being pink, or D. Big creature in the sea. That's right. I bark a lot. The next animal you were given was a flamingo. Your website choices is A, how to hiss, B, I bark a lot, C, being pink, or D, big creature in the sea. That's right, being pink. The next creature we got is this whale. And your website choices are A, how to hiss, 
B. I bark a lot. C. Being pink. Or D. Big creature in the sea. That's right. Big creature in the sea. Finally, you're given this snake. And your website choices are A. How to hiss. B. I bark a lot. C. Being pink. Or D. Big creature in the sea. That's right. How to hiss. So each one of these correlated with a different thing. One went with B. Two went with C. Three went with D. And four went with A. The next activity is being a cyber detective. For this one, you're going to use your skills of observation to try to detect what is missing in the pictures on the other side. So one, two, three, and four. At this point, I'm going to ask you to pause and find what's missing before I give you the answer key. In the meantime, I'm going to change my color pen. So you pause, and when you've figured out what's missing in each one of the pictures, come back. Welcome back. So, in picture one, the friend that is missing is the tulip, Tula. She is not in picture one. In picture two, the thing that is missing is the actual bird bath. In picture three... The thing that is missing is the panda bear and elephant in the background. And in picture four is Gerby, the little Gerber daisy that should be down here in the corner. On this page, this is your step three, test your power of observation. When you observe something, you notice the things around you. You use your eyes to see. You use your ears to hear, you use your nose to smell, and you use your fingers to feel. Sit for one minute and observe what is around you. What did you notice? Tell a friend or a family member. So, this is a do-it-yourself activity, and I would like you to post onto our Facebook page what you see for your one-minute observation what you hear for your one minute observation, what you feel for your one minute observation, and what you smell for your one minute observation. And once you've posted that, you'll be uh, finishing up the completed work for your badge requirements in step three. The final part says, what kind of things should you notice to do the following things safely? If you were to cross the street, what would you do to cross the street safely? You would look both ways, right? How about tasting hot soup? If the soup is really hot, you might blow on it or wait for it to cool. Or if you're really impatient, add an ice cube and water your soup down, but make it cooler faster. And finally, what might you do to play on a computer or a phone? Well, to do this safely, you might have a passcode to use your computer or phone, so it would be locked to start with. The next thing is you might have a login, like a login password to use the computer or phone application game. And then the final thing is uh, you would make sure that the game that you are playing is something that is safe for you to be playing. So you wouldn't go and play a random game that you found, you would check and make sure that it is a safe game with your parents. And this brings me back into some of that search stuff. When you're doing things like searching for answers on websites, always make sure that you check before you click the site that is an HTTPS, because the S stands for secure. So make sure you're doing that. Please make sure that if it's an application, that it is age appropriate and that it is safe for you to be using and that you know what that application is. And if you happen to be using some type of video programming, Please make sure that you're using the kid version so that you don't stumble into information or things that you don't need to see. You don't even want to see. You might as well not plug up the uh, mind with silly things. So you might want, want to make sure that you're on KidTube using a safe application or a safe video 
profile or a safe searching location. And as always, check with your parents. They want the best for you, and they want to make sure that you're safe when you're in a digital and cybersecurity space. People make mistakes, and they wander into cybersecurity locations that they shouldn't. It's okay. Mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncles would rather know that you opened up the wrong application or the wrong app, and uh, you don't know how to get back rather than you playing around, trying to fix it, and attempting to keep secrets. On that note, congratulations on uh, working on your third badge. Now that you've completed your third badge, you should be able to share what you know about being a cybersecurity investigator. You should be able to do uh, showing your friends and family how to look for clues and ask questions, and also which things you should, after you ask the question, what types of places you should look. So sh you should choose the appropriate site for the appropriate question. And you should be able to tell a friend or a family member what you learned about the ways computers can help you solve things. Finally, if you felt inspired in any way, I want to know what type of cyber investigation you were inspired by. And as always, I would love to see the completion of this badge culminating in you posting your answers to your one-minute observations. And please also feel free to practice a little mindfulness and do one-minute observations on your own. A little bit of time every day to yourself is a nice thing. On that note, I hope you enjoyed working on your cyber investigation badge, and I hope you're having a great day. Bye!